Welcome back to A History of Saps, Blackjacks, and Slung Shots. It's been a while, and that's because I've been doing other videos, but mostly it's because my book on said subject has kept me incredibly busy. The Hood County Jail Museum, in operation for almost a century, gives us a great opportunity to do kind of a, a special edition here. And this is small town Texas. This is in Granbury, Texas, and it's consequently a small jail, but you saw on that sign it was used until 1978. And the curator is a very cool guy, very knowledgeable, and he let me hold a vintage slapjack, or flat sap, from their collection. So imagine running this jail, this little thing here. You live in the first floor with your family in the old days, I was told, and the prisoners are above you. Imagine further that a prisoner attempts a violent breakout or something like that, or you lose control of one. There's not a lot of help handy. I've been to other museums like this throughout Texas, and I'm sure they're similar throughout the country, of course, but uh, they're often like this. You get these narrow little staircases heading upstairs to the you know, prisoner holding area. They're always really steep, too, so I could imagine a prisoner who's not going quietly causing a very dangerous situation. In fact, there's one such incident in my book, which the sheriff ended with, you guessed it, his trusty sap. And that highlights a major advantage that Saps and Blackjacks had, which is the ability to be used effectively within a very confined space. Helps explain American policemen's fondness for them for so long. Imagine trying to draw out and use a full-sized wooden billy club in a spot like this, and not just here, but up in the jail that we're going to see above, too. And speaking of that, here's the display case in which I saw a very old leather billy club, the kind of which I've done videos on, I own one, uh, and which I read about in my book, but more importantly... For this video, a flat sap. It was in a shadow box, and uh, they were so nice. They were about closing time, and they uh, took it out, opened up the shadow box, which they'd never done before. No one had ever asked for that, of course. Took it out, let me handle it. So here it is, a piece of law enforcement history. I'll let you see the details there. This is not by a well-known maker, which was often the case back then. You just get one of these made. It wasn't a big deal. They didn't think of them as uh, future collector's items. In fact, in very early 20th century order forms that I have where this kind of thing was purchased for police officers or by police officers, uh, the maker was never even mentioned. This one in particular was donated by Officer Charles Morell, hope I pronounced that correctly, of Granbury, because this is in the town of Granbury, Texas. It doesn't mention uh, what his years of service were, so we don't know exactly when this thing was carried, but it would not have been towards the beginning of this prison's, uh, you know, operational use. So I got to hold it, like I mentioned, and give you an idea of the proportion. Obviously, you can see the lanyard on the left, and we've talked about that in many other videos, how it would get used. Uh, as their literature points out, it would stick out of the pocket, so it's there, to aid in a quick draw. And got to play with it a little bit. That's a bad description, but you can see the degree of f flexibility there. And I'll give you a little view of the rest of the room. This was upstairs in the holding area, but the cells were outside of that room. I've seen more than a few of these small town old jails and uh, they always give me the same thought that one brief stay would scare me straight for sure. And there was very limited space so you could be sharing said space with a murderer even though you were basically just a drunk. And to try to stick to our subject, again, think in there, relying on that sap, that like, you know, eight ounce leather and lead sap for your protection. Not that we know the one I'm showing was particularly used on guard duty in here, by the way, but you get to the point. Uh, here's some actual graffiti scratch in the walls, by the way. Back to what I was saying, I think the point is it shows how trusted these objects were, and of course for so long. A sap is absolutely a deadly weapon, but I also call it in my book, in my manuscript, a kinder, gentler billy club, because that's in part what it is, especially the flat sap here, or any kind of soft one. And again, think about being, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a dangerous criminal when it was a dangerous criminal, not just someone sleeping it off in the drunk tank. Uh, and relying on something like this, it's actually surprising to me that the melee weapons they held weren't much more vicious, if you would. As much as I admire these as weapons, and, you know, I'm their biographer, uh, I found countless incidents where, you know, people got whacked and whacked again and whacked again, and it didn't do the job. So go back to that cell or one of those tiny little rooms or those stairs. And tell me you wouldn't want something that could do much more damage in one swing than something like this. So I think it's actually admirable that, you know, these weapons were relied on. It's part of what makes them unique in weapons history. And those are my thoughts on it, as you know, probably if you've seen my other videos. So there it is again. Very cool find. And to look at the kind of environment it was used in, in a rural law enforcement setting. And if you're ever in Granbury, Texas, uh, swing by and see the Hood County Jail Museum. 
Thanks as always.